Greetings folks, Doing Proper here, bringing you yet another in my series. And we're just going to do a little featurette here that talks about the differences between bolt-action rifles and semi-automatic... Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting this crap wrong. I'm forgetting about the media ideal of making these things look sinister. <clears throat> Let me start again. Now we're going to talk about the difference between a full semi-automatic rifle... This is what they come up with because they couldn't get away with calling them automatics anymore. Too many people that knew what they were talking about had to say to them, look, you're making idiots of yourselves. You keep calling semi-automatic rifles automatic and you're completely wrong. You're giving them a sinister look that they don't deserve. So they said, okay, then they're full semi-automatic rifles. They're just not going to give up the fight. So with 30 bullets within half a second. Uh, here is a full semi-automatic crowd killing 22 rifle by Mossberg. This is the 702 Plankster. And this one right here is the CZ 455 full bolt action, long distance death bringer. I've seen the bullets that implode. And these are both chambered in 22. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the difference between the, the two of these rifles, okay? Because there's slight differences. Well, actually, there's pretty big differences between bolt-action rifles and semi-automatic rifles. And we'll go ahead and take the bolt-action rifle first, all right? This is a bolt-action rifle. And what bolt-action means is in order for it to discharge its round, it requires the manual manipulation of a bolt in order to chamber the round, put it into position. And between semi-automatic rifles and bolt-action rifles, they say that bolt-action rifles are more accurate. And uh, that's true. Bolt-action rifles do tend to be more accurate. If you ever wonder why most of your sniper rifles and your long-distance uh, hunting rifles and stuff like that are bolt-action, it's because they do tend to be more accurate. It's not saying that semi-automatic rifles are not accurate. So please don't light up my comment section crying about how wrong I am. So bolt action rifles are generally considered to be more accurate because simply there's there's a lot less going on. Once you've manually chambered your round, uh, there's not much more going on other than the firing pin hitting that rim, right? Whereas with a semi-automatic, there's a lot more going on here. So if you've got a lot less moving parts, that means there's a lot less that can affect the accuracy of that round uh, getting down range. So now I oversimplified that, but uh, that's generally how you could look at it. How this works is, is I've taken the liberty of loading a couple dummy rounds here in the CZ's five round magazine and I will put it in. So as you can see, the round is in the chamber. It's ready to go in. The bolt pushes the round into the chamber and lock the bolt down to keep the chamber shut to retain the pressures that it needs to get the round down range. Right? So after that, the operator pulls his bolt back, it ejects the round, shoves the next round into position, bolts down, ready to fire again. Here is the trigger pull. That's the sound of a dummy round right there. So again, the same thing, there's the ejection, and that's how bolt action rifles work. And this one here has very good sights as you can see right here. These are adjustable for windage and elevation. And now here is your semi-automatic Mossberg 702 Plinkster. No, I'm sorry. Full semi-auto devil on my left shoulder. But you know, semi-automatic weapons are not just about gun control. This is about national security. You know that these weapons can shoot down airplanes. <clears throat> they can blow up air railroads. And this one has full fiber optic sights. Easier kill. Not with the 22 long rifle so much. And this one came with a 10 round magazine. Whereas the CZ 455 came with a five round magazine. But uh, for the CZ 455, I was able to go to the CZ website and pick up a couple 10 round magazines. I don't need any more than that. This is a bolt action rifle. And this is what this looks like with the 10 round magazines. So uh, I'm happy with those and these do work. So. 10 round magazines are available for this. You're not restricted to just the one five round magazine that comes with the CZ 455. Okay, now I can go back into my semi-auto. Now the Mossberg 702 Plinkster comes with a 10 round magazine. I ordered another 10 round magazine. Plus, I ordered a 25 round magazine. Large capacity ammunition feeding devices. As you can see my footage right here, the round's just 
seem to keep it coming and coming. And uh, because it's a 25 round magazine and more things tend to go wrong with rimfire weapons, I was waiting for something to go wrong. And with this one right here, as you can see, it has these levers right here that makes loading your rounds a lot easier, easing up the spring tension. Uh, nothing went wrong. So both times that I've used this 25 round magazine, uh, it went off pretty good. And it looks pretty uh, interesting inside of here. It looks weird like this because you can see it looks like a 10 round magazine with a big extension. But so as you can see with the 25 round magazine on here, it looks more like a deadly killing machine because it's black and it's got a high capacity magazine. Forget the fact that it's 22. It's legal to hunt humans with 15 round, 30 round, even 150 round magazines. And to get it off, it's pretty easy. You just squeeze your lever, pull it out, and disco. So this is a Mossberg 702 Plinkster, and it came with a 10-round magazine. How full extra deadly semi-automatic rifles work. And as you can see, uh, I chambered a couple dummy rounds in here. I'm saying dummy, but I don't mean to offend any dummies, okay? God, I know how this world is. Got the magazine into position. The charging handle right here. I'll pull it back. And as you can see, that blue round, if you can see it right there, is in position. It's ready to go. Releasing the charging handle. Chambers the first round, right? Now we're ready to go. And with semi-automatic rifles like this one, uh, you squeeze your trigger. Boom, there's the first round. The charging handle automatically comes back with the blowback. Ejects the round. You can see the next one is in position. It shoves it back into position again with its spring tension. Fire another round. And then it blows back, ejects the round, and with the last round with this one right here, it does have a last round hold open, but basically that's all it's doing is it's using its pressure and chambering the next round and chambering the next round and chambering the next round. And again, this one does have a last round hold open, which when you extract your magazine, releases your bolt back into this position. With this one right here, you can lock your bolt back by pulling back your charging handle and pushing inward and uh, that's how you do that. A semi-automatic rifle, for those of you who are not in the know or who have been reporting differently in the event any of the people from the media happen to stumble upon my video, idiots. Rambo. A semi-automatic rifle fires one round for one trigger pull, right? Boom, boom, boom. If I hold the trigger down, still only one round is going to come out. Why? Because it's not automatic. Anyway, I needed to get that out of the way. So the advantage behind semi-automatic simply is because your hands don't have to leave their position to continue firing. Whereas with a bolt action rifle, you've got to manually chamber each round. This one here is pretty accurate too. Um, it's got again, the full fiber optic sights which makes it that much more deadly and formidable. And uh, this is a pretty good one. Now, the weights, this is a lighter rifle here because this is obviously mostly polymer here. This bolt action here weighs a little more because it has real woods. You should know that if you're getting a polymer stocked weapon that you're gonna get something that's a little bit lighter and the wood weighs a little bit more on some of these rifles. So for bolt action rifles and semi-automatic rifles, it really is up to the user because it just, what are you using them for, you know? Uh, there are a lot of aftermarket things available for both types of rifle. Again, you've got 25 round magazines and um, fancy butt stocks and stuff like that that you can get for your 702 Plinkster. A bunch of different configurations for your semi-automatic rifles these days. And of course, uh, you can change the magazine capacities for your bolt action rifles too, such as these 10 rounders that I picked up from the CZ website. So has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. Rambo. Rambo. But I just wanted to talk about the differences between bolt action rifles and semi-automatic rifles. And I was going to use two 22 rifles in the process. So now how does the accuracy compare with these? I thought you would never ask. Here's a target. So what we've got is seven yards, 10 yards, and 15 yards 
with the CZ455 being in this column and the 702 Plankster being in this column. And to look at this, uh, it looks like the CZ455 is pretty accurate here. This is good grouping. Over here, it's not that much different, is it? Well, that's just seven yards. That's not that much different. And I, you can see that I pulled around over here. I'm not sure what happened with that. Let's look at 10 yards. Uh, 10 yards? Yeah, it's not looking that much different, is it? Okay. Well, these are two 22 rifles, and uh, the sights are great with the uh, semi-automatic right here. And, of course, it is a beauty to shoot the CZ-455. But uh, I've got a couple dead center here at the CZ-455. I like Rambo. like seeing that. And uh, I've got a couple rounds out here. Not too bad. Uh, I've got more points, if you want to think about it, with the 702 Plankster. All right? So for point purposes, I've got more points with the Plankster, but they're pretty similar. They're not that much different. And at 15 yards, boy, this is the telltale thing for me. At 15 yards, I've got them all outside here, and the grouping is not any better with the CZ-455 than it is with the uh, 702 Plankster. As a matter of fact, someone's going to say, and I agree, that the grouping is better with the Plankster on what I did. However, I think the sights with the CZ-455 uh, got me in a little closer to my bullseye than with the 702 Plankster. So I am not really sure what was going on there, but I've got some shots outside here with the Plankster, and uh, most of my rounds are inside here with the CZ-455. And I've got to guess, since uh, the range that I was at only goes up to 15 yards, that if I were at 20 and 25 yards, uh, I would get a lot better accuracy with the CZ-455 just because of how solid this thing is to shoot and how much better I am with the CZ-455 sights. Despite the fact that the 702 Plankster has fiber optic sights, for some reason I did much better with the CZ-455. So uh, there you go. By looking at these targets, I'm not sure that you're going to come up with anything very conclusive as to whether or not the CZ-455 is any more accurate than the 702 Plankster or vice versa. So as for whether or not one is more accurate than the other, well, you know, I'm not sure how conclusive the evidence was with my target, but you can take what I did for what it's worth, and that is with these guns in my hands. Folks, there are a lot better shooters than me out there. Rambo. As for putting these guns in my care, that's what you had to work with. So well, here it is, folks, the CZ-455 Standard and the Mossberg 702 Plankster.
And folks, as I have previously let on, pretty soon the Two and Proper channel is going to be opening on Patreon as well. Uh, as you guys know, YouTube has been somewhat unkind to gun channels, conservative websites, anything that's not far left. Uh, YouTube does not like. And I'm going to be starting with two modest patron levels first because uh, Two and Proper channel never did have a buttload of money. And as the Two and Proper channel grows via Patreon and YouTube or whatever, uh, then I'll be able to grow my reward levels and uh, the content will get better and better. There will be more and more for the patrons and uh, it'll definitely be something to look forward to. So if you like what you've seen from the Two and Proper channel, please watch for me to appear on Patreon and become a patron. Uh, you won't be sorry, especially if you like the type of content that I've been bringing you for the past five years. Now, some of my viewers have asked me how I feel about what YouTube is doing to the gun channels and conservative channels and stuff like that. And I can tell you that I don't like it. Uh, it has hit a lot of us very hard. However, YouTube is a privately run company. They have a right to do that. They did not have to have us on their channel at all. Um, I think that it's uh, weaselly and weak that they would do this to gun channels and conservative channels and stuff like that. That's my personal opinion and it is an actual insult to the First Amendment and to open dialogue and all of that other stuff. But it does not matter what I think. YouTube is a privately run company. They have a right to do that. Much the same way a Christian baker has a right to not serve a wedding cake to a gay couple. That's the same exact thing. Now there's some hypocrisy on the left about that because there's people cheering about what YouTube is doing to conservative channels and gun channels and stuff like that. They're cheering about that, but they were very, very angry about a Christian baker that did not want to serve gay couples. Well, what YouTube and Christian bakers in this case are doing is the exact same thing. They both have the right to do that because they are both privately run companies. Now I appreciate what YouTube has done and I, I really like having my videos on YouTube. I wish that they didn't have such a weird thing going with what they consider to be the First Amendment for certain kind of people. But uh, you know that's, that's just the way it is and that's why a lot of us are going over to Patreon. Now, if you like what you've seen from the Two Improper channel, if you've been enjoying my reviews, and if you would like to see some really good beefed up content from the Two Improper channel, I will be releasing my link for Patreon very soon. So watch for a video to release my Patreon channel, and you'll also hear me say a little more about Patreon in some of my other videos coming up too, just to get the word out. So I do appreciate all of my viewers and all the people that have been watching my videos. I'm having a genuine ball doing these videos. I think it is so fun doing these and it has actually become a hobby of mine. So I want to thank you all very much and I do hope that you will join me on Patreon because there's lots more fun to be had on the Two Improper channel. Thanks for watching folks. My email address is scrolling across the bottom of the screen as we speak right now. To improper at gmail.com right and I will answer you provided you're gonna be polite about whatever it is you have to say and if I've got the time and don't forget to check out not just guns in Mason Michigan I'm not allowed to give links anymore folks I'm not allowed to give links but you can pretty much figure it out not just guns is one word and they have a lot in their store for like-minded people because that's why they're called not just guns and don't forget to check out 14K in Westland, Michigan on the corner of Wayne and Ford Road. Great guys to work with, friendly service, a very reputable place. 14K on Ford and Wayne Roads in Westland, Michigan. And thanks for watching, folks. God bless America and keep on protecting your family, yourselves, your flag, your country, its honor. It is always the right thing to do. Rambo.